Good morning, roasters, and thanks for joining me today. In this installment of the Roasting with Roastmaster screencast series, we're going to take a closer look at the concept of targeting in the Roast Analyzer. In the second installment of the series, we learned how to use this feature to target the roast's profile that we manually set and how to use that profile's reference curves to keep the data curves of our current roast on track as the roast progresses. But what you may not know is that you can also use this targeting feature to target specific roasts from your past roast library. And Roastmaster makes it very easy to not only find um, roasts based on certain criteria, but also to select them manually so that you can pick out individual roasts that you may want to target. So let's learn how to do this. We'll navigate over to our roast library and select our first roast and launch the roast analyzer. Now we can see that our targeting mode is off at the moment, so we'll tap the targeting button in the bottom left of the toolbar and enter profile program targeting mode. And in this mode, we can see the reference curve information from the profile that we're using in this roast. And as we've learned, this information is displayed as dotted lines that we use for targeting while roasting. But if we tap the targeting mode button again, we enter past roast targeting mode where instead of targeting reference curves from a profile, we're actually targeting data curves from a previous roast. Now, whenever we enter past roast targeting mode, or whenever we actually change the past roast that we're targeting, Roastmaster will show us this little banner here that tells us which past roast we're currently viewing. At the moment, we can see we're looking at our Brazilian Santos roast from April the 25th. We can see the roast degree and the profile that we used along with the duration. And we can also see that this is past roast one of 500. Now what this means is that at the moment, the analyzer has access to 500 of our past roast. And in a minute, I'll show you how to change this and determine exactly which roast the analyzer can pick from. But at the moment, we have 500 available to us, and if we want to change the one that we're currently viewing, then we can tap anywhere in this bottom axis and drag over to the right and pan quickly through them and perhaps find one of interest that we want to target, then just release our finger and we'll switch to the information in that roast. And when we're done, this little banner down at the bottom will hide itself automatically. If we ever want to get it back, all that we need to do is tap the magnifying glass button here and Roastmaster will pop it back up. Now we've navigated using the swipe action, but you can also use these little arrows down here on either side of the banner to go roast by roast one at a time. Um, of course, it's much faster just to take your finger and drag quickly along the axis to navigate that way. Um, but back here at the beginning, we can see something that we probably haven't seen yet before. And that is this purple bar over here in the y-axis on the left. What this is, is showing us um, the average cupping scores of the focus pass roast that we're viewing. So Roastmaster has looked at our database and found all of the cuppings that we performed of this roast of uh, Brazilian Santos and has averaged them all together and is showing us that number as 89.8 here. And if we wanted to see the details of these cuppings without ever leaving the analyzer, we could just tap on the cupping icon here and we'll see not only the scores of the cuppings, but also the individual attribute scores and any notes that we recorded for these cuppings. So as we pan around here and decide which roasts we want to use for targeting, we'll have a good idea based on these cupping scores, which ones are the best choices. So now that we know how to navigate through this list of past roasts that the analyzer is making available to us, let's talk about where it actually gets this information from. Now, before we were here in the analyzer, we were in the main roast console. So let's close out of the analyzer and go back to the roast console here. Now, if we look immediately under the roast console graph here, we can see that same number 500 that we encountered in the roast analyzer when navigating our past roasts. What that number refers to is the count of the set of past roasts 
that we have chosen here via the selector buttons and it's that data that Roastmaster is using to show us crack information and duration information here in the console graph as well as to calibrate the roast gauge here for roast degree targeting or for first crack or second crack targeting. So essentially the data that you see here in the console is the same data that will be available to you in the roast analyzer for past roast targeting. So let's see how we use these criteria selection buttons to quickly and easily find past roasts of interest. We'll start off here with the first button, which is the roaster button. We'll tap this button, which tells Roastmaster to find us all of the roasts that were done with the roaster that we're currently using in this roast. And we can see that number 500 has changed here to 162, and we are now only viewing roasts that use the same roaster as our current roast here, which is the Probatino. So we can see by the 162 that we have roasted with this roaster 162 times and that those roasts are being used to show us crack and duration information here in the graph, as well as calibrate our roast gauge. And if we were to launch the analyzer in past roast targeting mode, we can see that we're seeing past roast one of 162 here. And let's enable the second button here, which corresponds to profile. And that number has fallen down to 74. So we're now viewing roasts that not only use the same roaster that we are using in this roast, but that also use the same profile of pyrolysis target too. And again, in the analyzer, we can see we have those same 74 roasts available to us to use for past roast targeting. And we have several buttons here, and I'll go through the list of what each one does. The next one is program. Then we have weight, which would correspond to the weight of the roasted items here. We have curves, which will attempt to uh, loosely match the curve structure of your past roast and show you only roast with similar curves. Uh, we have custom roaster settings, which will match only the custom roaster settings of this particular roast. We have bean, region, country, moisture, density, size, caffeine, and processing. Now, these last eight buttons, starting with bean here, all deal with the varietal attributes of the greens you're roasting. Roastmaster is very meticulous about how it arrives at a match when looking at your past roasts. Uh, remember, you can roast not only one single green, but also multiple greens or even blends. So when Roastmaster looks through your data for matches, it will evaluate these attributes here based on weight and average them together when necessary to arrive at a comparable number to determine if a match is made. For this reason, the weight attribute is inferred as a matter of course for these uh, last eight buttons but it doesn't hurt to leave the weight button enabled anyway. As a matter of fact, I actually recommend it because we're usually looking for data that will be comparable to our current roast here in order to display only relevant information and weight is usually the deciding factor as to whether or not past roasts are going to be comparable to our current roast. And again, when any of these criteria buttons are enabled, Roastmaster will only be finding roast with comparable elements to that of the current roast. And consequently, when they are disabled, Roastmaster will not be considering that criteria for matching. So we can see it's pretty easy to hone in on roast that match our current roast to give us an idea of uh, comparable data that we may want to target in the roast analyzer. But we could also manually choose the roast we wanted if we wanted to do it that way. And to do that, we just tap the magnifying glass button here and tap the plus. And Roastmaster will show us a list of our past roasts and we can go right down the line and choose the ones that we want and tap done. And we can see those five roasts are now available to us here in the graph and also here in the roast analyzer. 
And to exit out of manual mode here, all we need to do is tap the red X and we're back in our automatic criteria mode. So let's give a real world example of these criteria buttons. We've already got the roaster enabled so that we know that the roast that we're viewing here and in the analyzer for past roast targeting mode are all going to be roasts that we've done on this roaster. So that's pretty important. Uh, the next thing, let's say we want to only view roast of this particular bean on this roaster. We'll enable the bean button and we've got three roast, which probably isn't really a uh, broad enough range for us. So we'll turn bean off and instead go to country. Okay, that's better. We can see we have 12 roast here to pull from. Um, but if we want to broaden up a little bit, let's turn off country and go to region. Okay, good. Now we have 25 rows that we can pull from. So in the roast analyzer, um, we'll be able to choose from any number of these 25 rows for past rows targeting if we wanted to do that. Um, I'm not saying that they're all going to be comparable since we're only filtering by region but it at least gives you an example of how to hone in on the data that you may want for this. Now, for targeting in the analyzer, I've said this before and I'll say it again here now, I do strongly advise setting a specific profile in each roast and using profile targeting mode during the roast as your main means of targeting. Using a specific profile not only speeds up the setup process of the roast, but it also provides you with a very specific set of data to target and this is usually a set of curves that you've arrived at with a good deal of experimentation or tweaking over the course of time and profiles can also be easily segregated for certain bean um, regions or processing methods or countries and it's a really good way to provide a record of what you targeted during the roast but that being said, the ability to easily switch even during a roast and quickly find a past roast to target instead, perhaps the one that um, you made a happy mistake on a few roasts ago and you really liked the way it turned out, um, or just as a means of adapting and augmenting your profiles and trying new things. This option is available to you in Roastmaster and it's very easy to do once you know how Roastmaster looks at this information. So hopefully this will be a tool for you in future roasts to give you a broader range of data to pull from and to help make your roast even better. So hopefully you've learned a lot here today and I wanna say thanks for joining me and watching this screencast and stay tuned for future installments of uh, this series as well as screencasts on other topics in Roastmaster. Uh, all of them, as always, geared to helping you get the most out of Roastmaster.